Hey, Seth David here. Welcome to the Daily Accelerated Growth Call for Monday, October 5th, 2015. This is a sample of what you'll get in the actual Daily Accelerated Growth Call once you've subscribed, which you can do, of course, right here on schoolofanswers.com. We've made it as easy as it could possibly be for you. There's a link that you'll see right at the top once the page loads that says the Daily Accelerated Growth Call. When I used to work as a stockbroker, we'd have a sales meeting every morning before the New York Stock Exchange bell would ring. It wasn't about the stock market. It was about getting us pumped up for the day. It was about getting us pumped up to accomplish our goals. It was about making more money this month than we did last month. And it was about what we were going to do differently when we didn't reach our goals. And, and I learned a lot of valuable lessons that I still take with me to this day from those sales trainers who, by the way, were usually the best salesperson in the room, uh, who would give us these pep talks every morning. And it might sound cheesy and it might even feel a little cheesy, but the truth is it was damn effective. It got us pumped up. I never walked away from one of those meetings without feeling extremely excited to get into my day, to pick up the phone and to start making phone calls and closing sales. So if you're somebody who does cold calling for a living, this is great for you. But also, if you're simply somebody who runs your own business and wants that little sort of shot of adrenaline every morning before you get started, then join us. Join us every day, Monday through Thursday from 8 to 9 a.m. Now, looking at my day, and that's the first thing I like to do every day. Actually, let me back up. I've learned to make sure, I've learned it again very recently, to make sure that the first thing I do every day has absolutely nothing to do with work. Especially as somebody who works in a remote cloud-based business and works from home, it's become really important for me to make sure that I remember that my whole day isn't about what I do for a living. And for me, what that looks like is I get out of bed every day and the first thing I do, without even having my first cup of coffee in many cases, is I take my dogs for a walk. At this point, it's hysterical and it's adorable because as soon as I wake up, the three of them crowd around me because they know what's about to happen, which tells me that I'm doing a really good thing for them. They get really excited. And I think I get as excited as they do. It's just such a nice way to start the day. I usually do it at about 6 a.m., uh, some of you may know that I've been in the habit of working out in the mornings over the years. I've stopped that. My workouts are now taking place at night and actually kind of later at night. I work out between the hours of like 8 and 10 p.m. And I love that. I love coming home from the day. After working out at the gym, I feel so calm and reflective. I'm able to look back over my day and think in terms of what did I accomplish. Sometimes I'll even sit down and, and bang out some notes. And I'm learning to use Trello more and more for this. And you're going to see probably as the days go on, if you're watching this and following along why that is. In the meantime, it's Monday. Sunday, as you know, if, especially if you uh, looked at the recent uh, Zero Email Inbox Process series that I did on the School of Bookkeeping blog, which is toolegittoaudit.com, um, I clear out my inbox on Sundays, which means that when I get up Monday morning, I don't need to worry about checking my emails because anything that is in there now is something that just came in overnight and it can wait till 5 p.m. today before I give it a response. What I've learned is that by having my email open and checking it incessantly, it becomes a distraction. And then if I get something in that suddenly I feel inclined to respond to it right away, again, I'm even further distracted and I'm not accomplishing whatever it is that I had set out to accomplish for that time slot during the day. So I'm learning to close the email. I used to think, well, I'll keep it open, but I won't really pay attention to it. And who am I kidding, right? So I close the inbox. I don't even let the emails come in. I put my phone on do not disturb mode. All of our mobile phones have that option. Put it on do not disturb mode so that even if I get a text message or something, you know, I always have it on silent, not even vibrate, but silent. I almost always have it on that setting no matter what I'm doing, where I am, because I just find it annoying when my phone rings or makes noises, especially in public places. But the other thing is I actually put it on do not disturb mode when I'm here at my office trying to stay focused. Because even if I have it on silent and the screen lights up because I've gotten a new text message or something, that also becomes a distraction. And then my mind starts obsessing with it, right? I, who is it? What is it? Maybe it's something cool. Maybe it's something, maybe I just made a million, you know, whatever it is, it can wait you know, that's been my experience and I'm much better off staying focused and then I get much more accomplished so that at 5 p.m. today, I'll focus on my phone calls and emails that I need to handle. And for that matter, if somebody reaches out to me and I know I want to talk to them that day, I say, hey, can we do it at 5 o'clock, right? That's when I'll schedule those calls that I want to sort of fit in for the day. So inbox is clear. No need to check emails to the end of the day because I went through everything just recently. And my rule is within 24 hours, everybody gets a response. So there's, if I respond by 5 p.m. today, everybody will 
have gotten a response within 24 hours of when they sent it, no question. 25 minutes a day is what I want you to start learning to spend. That's what I'm teaching myself to start learning to spend. Uh, at the beginning of every day, organizing the day. Even if you don't think you need it, great, then you'll be finished early. But plan on spending 25 minutes at the head of every day. I do this when I first come back from my walk with my dogs. I, I brew my first cup of coffee. And then I spend the 25 minutes and I look at my to-do lists. And mind you, I do have to-do lists in several different places because they serve different purposes. So, for example, what I'm starting to do in Trello is I have this main board. And I'm sort of converting this process from Evernote over to Trello. So if you did watch my series on the zero email inbox process, then you'll know that what I did was I cleared out my inbox. And normally I will have forwarded a bunch of emails to uh, Evernote for tagging and follow-up. So now I'm doing that in Trello instead. And notice what's cool is I can have my boards open and I can right-click and open it in a new tab. So this way I kind of have like my main menu here. And if I go in here now, this is my sort of main to-do list area. But then as I have things, for example, based on content production, which is 90% of what I do these days, then I have a board for that. And that board has its own set of to-dos. So in the main board, I might actually have something in here that says, today you need to focus on content for schoolofbookkeeping.com, right? And then I'll know once I see that there, that this is where I need to go for more information about what I had scheduled for myself to accomplish today along those lines. So I have my content production and scheduling board. This is my example. Yours may look very different, especially if you're a bookkeeper and you're not in the business of producing content. You're in the business of providing bookkeeping services. So your version of this might be that you have a main board that at a high level lists the clients that you're going to work on and when and maybe some notes about what you want to make sure you accomplish. But then you'll have a separate board and probably even a, a separate team for each of those uh, clients that you have that you work on. They used to call them organizations in Trello, now they're called teams. So you, you create the teams because it's, you know, different clients are going to have different people working on them, presumably. Uh, and then within each team, of course, you have the boards for the different things. And you might have one board for everything that you have to do for that client. Or if there are specific projects, you might want to create a separate board so that you can do it sort of project by project. That's up to you in terms of how you want to structure it. But the point I'm getting at is that during that first 25 minutes, I'm kind of going through my to-do list. And then you know what I do? I go into, if today, for example, is reserved strictly for production. So I created this card and it's got a list of everything that I want to do today production wise. The only thing that's not on here is what I'm actually doing right now, which is the daily accelerated growth call. But I have that in my head that every day at 8 a.m. pretty much that's what I'm doing right now and hopefully for a long time to come into the future. So again, close your email, focus on organizing your day, what you need to accomplish, and then you know, plan everything, right? So you plan your breaks, plan your downtime, have your main task board, like I said, and then the detailed tasks based on team or topic, uh, you know, also open. Go through them and create something somewhere, which at a high level just shows you, here's what I want to accomplish for the day. It helps me calm down. You know, a lot of times I get up in the morning and my mind is racing. Some, a lot of times I get up in the middle of the night and my mind is racing because I have all these ideas about things that I want to do and I'm, I start getting worried. I'm not going to remember how to do them. Well, that's one of the reasons I I've come to love Trello. I really love the way Trello works, especially on the mobile app where I can grab my phone, which is always right next to me when I'm sleeping, and I can open up the Trello app and go into my main board inbox and just start adding cards. And this way, you know, when I'm having trouble sleeping, I purge those ideas and thoughts, which then when I do this 25 minutes, that's when I can go through them and start organizing them. I can move a card to the content production board, for example, if that's what it really has to do with. So the idea is it helps calm me down when I start getting worked up and excited, as I often do, about all the things that I want to do, right? These aren't even things in my case that it's, it's not like, oh my God, I have to do all this stuff. I don't work for anyone, right? But, and that's a beautiful thing. But then I become my own slave driver sometimes. And I don't really mean that in a negative way. I'm being funny about it. But the reality is, what I do is I get ideas and it's not so much that I have to do them, it's that I desperately want to do them. And oftentimes for me, it's like, oh my God, there's all this stuff I want to do. How am I ever going to get the time to do it all? And of course, the answer is that at a certain point, I've got to open up my calendar and start scheduling it, right? And if I know there's a whole lot of stuff I want to do for School of Bookkeeping, then as you can see here, I've got a whole day blocked out for production for schoolofbookkeeping.com. And I don't have to be any more detailed than that on my calendar. The time is blocked out. It's linked to my scheduling system. So if somebody's trying to get an appointment with me, they won't have access to this block of time. All right, let me take a breath. 
I, I do get excited about this stuff, but hopefully that rubs off on you. That's really my ultimate goal with this daily accelerated growth call is that I hope my excitement rub, rubs off on you and gets you pumped up for the day. That's what I want to do for you every day. People ask me, Seth, how do you do it? This is how I do it. I spend the time thinking about all the stuff that I have going on, all the exciting things I have to do. I've, I can't remember the last time. It's been years since I woke up and said, oh my God, I have to work today. Every day for like 16 years now, it's been more about oh my God, I can't wait to get into my day and get started. There's so many cool things I want to do. I hope that your day is like that. And if not, I hope I can get you to a place where your day is like that. So spend that 25 minutes. Plan your breaks. Plan your downtime. Use Trello or Evernote or Active Collab or whatever you're inclined to use to keep your tasks organized because that's what helps me get a little peace of mind. I know it's going to be handled. I know I'm not going to forget because I've purged the thoughts even if it was in the middle of the night and stuck them in an inbox which I know I'm going to be in the habit of checking first thing the next morning during that 25 minute kind of daily review. Even on the um, recovery side of my life and that's where I learn a lot of this stuff from. One of the things we're told to do in the 10th step, which has to do with daily living, uh, is at the beginning of the day, we, we look at the day ahead. We think about the day to come and what we're going to do and what we're going to accomplish. And then at the end of the day, there's a, a, a period of reflection where we look back on our day and we look at what we did accomplish. We look at the assets and the liabilities to see what did we do well, what did we not do so well. And of course, built into our program is the, the notion that if we identify that we've caused anybody harm, we make restitution immediately. So plan your downtime, have your to-do list organized close your email, schedule the time to look at your emails. You'll get so much more done. Every time I do it, I'm so thankful to myself that I did it because I can see always very clearly how much more focused I was. Another thing during that 25 minutes, set a goal. You should set a big picture goal first of all. How many new clients are you going to get this month? What are you going to then then today? What are you going to do today to make an effort to get that new clients? Maybe it's blocking out that hour of time or two hour block of time to make those phone calls that you've been needing to make to follow up on people who've called and left you messages, or maybe people you spoke to a week ago that you never heard back from. You know how many times I've called those people back and followed up, and all of a sudden I get a sale where I'm sure that if I hadn't followed up, they would have forgotten about me and probably moved on to someone else. So it's important to block out that time, especially if you have it as one of your primary goals to grow your business. If you want to get new clients, then that's the kind of stuff that you need to do. Block out the time, make the phone calls, and you'll have peace of mind that will come, I can assure you, with knowing that you've blocked out the time, especially if you stick with it and actually follow through. And at that time, stop what you're doing and go make those calls. And even it's even better if you can plan it ahead of time who you're going to call and just put their information in one place, right? If you first have to go scrambling at that time that you've set to compile the information, then that makes it an unpleasant process. If you plan ahead and open up a note in Evernote or a card in Trello and just copy and paste the person's contact information and maybe any notes you've made about the conversations you've had with them, then it's just, it's so pleasant when the time comes. It's like, it's like having a really organized employee, except that that employee is you, where you just open up the card and you say, okay, it's four o'clock in the afternoon. I'm going to relax. I'm going to pick up the phone. I'm going to enjoy a pleasant conversation with somebody talking about what I love to do, which is helping people, finding out how I can help this person specifically, and then putting a program of action together that will enable me to provide them with the support that they need so that they can be freed up to do what they would rather be spending their time doing because they'll have the peace of mind that comes with knowing that I've got this part of their lives handled, whatever that is, whatever it is that you provide to your customers. Finally, for today, think about, and, and, and going past the call or really kind of before that call, you know, if you're looking at your daily goals and you're saying, all right, what am I going to do today to get that client? Maybe it's the calls, but maybe you don't have any calls to make. Maybe your business is brand new. Then, of course, you make your full-time job getting that first client. But the other thing to think about, if you have clients and you have established things going on, but you still want to make sure that you're spending some time always growing your business, then you have to ask yourself an important question every single day at the beginning of the day. How will you get that client? What are you going to do? If you don't have a client coming in the door, if you don't have a prospect to call at four o'clock today, then maybe what you want to do during that hour is write a blog post. Think about who your target market is, who are you trying to target for clients, right? If you, Maybe you want people in the real estate business, great. Write some content, even better, record a video, even better, do both, right? About something related to the topic of accounting for real estate, 
right? Or whatever it is that you do for real estate. If you're a broker, then write a blog post and record a video about how to find the best home, right? Or how, you know, how to, whatever it is, you can think of the ideas, but you get my point. You'll want to uh, create that content. So that way, that hour of the day, you're doing one of two things. Either you've got the prospects because of, you've already done the footwork to bring them in your door, and then you make the phone calls. If you don't have any calls to make, then you're producing content. And lay out your campaigns. I'm finding that Trello is a great place and a great way to lay out the campaigns. I've got a little stack here, or a list as they call it, um, for every different sort of place on the web where I might produce content. Uh, you're not seeing everything here because I've got it filtered based on what I've uh, labeled to be done today. But as you can see, I've got lists for everything. I've got an inbox. I've got the general to-dos. I've got this. Here's my notes about this very video that I'm doing, right? Everything I wanted to discuss. And it's linked to a Word doc, which I have on my other screen, which you can't see. But it's basically my bullet points based on what I wanted to make sure I talked about during this video. So, my friends... As always, I hope you find this helpful. I, re I really hope you'll, you'll find this you know, inspiring enough to want to come and join us, join Stacy and I, for a daily call every single day, Monday through Thursday, the ongoing conversation 24-7 on our Slack team, the Daily Accelerated Growth Call. Let us help you accelerate your growth. I look forward to seeing you on the call.